Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmadu wa nasta'inu wa nasta'gfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina wa min sayyat a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudhillala wa man yudhlilhu falahadiyala wa nashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa nashhadu anna sayyidana wa habibana wa maulana muhammad عبده ورسوله مولا يا صل وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المخضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين O Allah, from you alone do we ask for help A common question asked is that is this only referring to the Muslims? Is it possible if your non-Muslim friend asks you, I am a non-Muslim, I am not maybe a Muslim by name, but I do believe in a superior God. I do, be, I do believe in a great creator. So would it be possible for me to ask my creator for things? Perhaps he makes shirk with Allah. Perhaps he does not make shirk, but he doesn't believe in the finality of the prophethood of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But is it possible for him to ask? There's a Quran ayah in the Quran stating, وَمَا دُعَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ إِلَّا فِي ضَلَالِ And the supplications of the kuffar is but in vain. So perhaps we read the Quran, and if you do not have sufficient knowledge a person can come to the conclusion that if a kafir makes dua his dua is not accepted however the ulama explain that no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of everyone and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what they do in this world Allah even listens to the dua of a kafir. Let alone a kafir, Allah even listens to the duas of animals. If a person oppresses an animal and that animal out of hurt makes a dua against you, that dua will be accepted by Allah. Similarly, a kafir, if he does a lot of good and he makes a supplication to Allah, there's no reason why Allah will not accept it. Then what's the meaning of that ayah where Allah says that the dua of the kafir is in vain? That is referring to Jahannam. When the kuffar will be closed in Jahannam, and Jahannam will be so intense upon them, they will be burning like coal. كُلَّمَا نَذِجَتْ جُلُودُهُمْ بَدَّلْنَاهُمْ جُلُودًا غَيْرَهَا لِيَذُوقُ الْعَذَابِ Every time, the skin will be burnt out, we will put a new skin for them, so they may taste the intensity of the fire. Hence, they will scream out, Ya Malik, O oh Malik. Malik will be Khazana to Jahannam, the treasurer or the doorkeeper of Jahannam. They will cry for something to drink. It will become too intense for them. They will cry for something to eat. Hunger will be finishing them. And then they will be given min shajarati zaqoom, ta'amul athim. They will be given the huge thorns of the wild trees of Jahannam. And these thorns will be so sharp, it will prick them and it will hurt them within. And naturally when you eat something very hard or something which is difficult to digest, you will want something to drink. Then they will ask for something to drink. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them min ghalyil hameem. Allah will then give them the pus and the blood 
of the people of Jahannam which will be boiling hot to drink. It will hardly come to their mouths and it will already start melting their lips. It will then be forcefully thrown down their throats. Jahannam is no joke my brothers. Jahannam is no joke. When Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa spoke about Jahannam, his hair should stand up. Sahaba would listen to Jahannam and they would cry like babies cry. Because this is no joke. This is an exposure of the intense ghadab and, 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 and anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, after so long suffering, they will say, O oh Malik, O oh Khazana to Jahannam, O oh the doorkeeper of Jahannam, can you give us few moments to speak with Allah? We just want to speak to Allah. My brother, you had so many years in this world free to speak to Allah, but you ran away from Allah. You didn't want to come to the masjid to speak to Allah. When the Adhan called, you turned your face away. Now why you want to speak to Allah? Now you've realized that you need Allah, you want to speak to Him? So they will not answer. And sometimes, you know, you tell a, you phone somewhere, rather they tell you no straight than keeping you waiting, anticipating. Al intidaru ashaddu min al maut. Anticipation is worse than death. You don't know what's happening. So they will be kept in anticipation. No answer. Malik, Malik, call Allah. No answer, no answer. And after that, after hundreds of years, then Malik will say, what do you want? They say we want to speak to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will listen to them. They will say, oh Allah, take us out from here. We will be believers. We will do this. We will do that. Allah waiting so long with the little hope that perhaps they'll get out from there. And the answer will come to them. And dwell in it forever. Rot in Jahannam. Wala tukallimun. You have no authority to speak. That is what Allah is referring to in the Quran. Wama dua ul kafirina illa fi dalal. At that time, the supplication, the dua, the humbleness of the kuffar will be of no benefit for them. But in this world, if a person lifts up his hands, even if he may be a kafir, he is calling the superior, he is calling Allah. And a dalil and a proof to that is that after shaitan, after shaitan openly and vividly disobeyed Allah and did not make the sajda to Adam, at that time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chased him out of, Jahan, uh, of Jannah and Allah ta'ala expelled him and Allah cursed him and then too he asks Allah, Oh Allah grant me a life until the day of Qiyamah and grant me authority that I may mislead people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayer. If the dua of a kafir, if a dua of a person whom Allah is cursed is not accepted, then why was the dua of Iblis accepted? So in this world, a kafir's dua is accepted. However, in the akhirah, in Jahannam, then these duas will be ignored. Coming to Hidayah, we spoke about Hidayah. From an angle or a perspective of whom Allah gives Hidayah to, we mentioned there's three categories. Today I want to mention not to whom Allah is giving hidayah to, but how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the hidayah, that is a different two categories. Now, many a time, if we understand these two categories of hidayah, different from the other three that we mentioned. We mentioned three categories of hidayah, that was pertaining to whom Allah gives hidayah. Kullu qawmin, Allah ta'ala guided everything. Ata kulla shay'in, Allah ta'ala gave everything, it's hidayah. Number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the, 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 the Muslims in specific to accept Iman. And thirdly, Allah ta'ala guides the pious people to increase. That is concerning whom Allah gave Hidayat. But now how Allah gives Hidayat? That there's a different two categories. And if we understand this, insha'Allah, a lot of doubts that comes into mind in your mind will disappear. The Quran if it was min indi ghayri Allahi la wajadu fi ikhtilafan kathira. If this Quran was from anyone besides Allah, they would find a lot of inconsistencies, contradictions in the Quran. But because the Quran is from Allah, this Quran is perfectly in harmony. Every ayah 
is uh, is is uh, every ayah if for example you see one ayah here one ayah there outwardly it may look like it's contradicting but there's absolutely no contradictions if there's any doubts that arise in your mind it is because we do not have the encompassing knowledge to understand how it fits in each other once we understand how beautifully and perfectly everything fits into each other then there's no doubts anymore a doubt may come in your mind Allah says clearly in the Quran Kareem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يَهْدِي مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُذِلُّ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives guidance to whom he wants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misleads whom he wants so now a person may ask if Allah ta'ala guides whom he wants and misleads whom he wants then what is left to the servant? He's forced. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced him to guidance or to misguidance. Then it is not the fault of the man. The man, he is innocent. Allah misguided him. What could he do? If Allah wanted to, to guide him, Allah would have guided him. But the fact Allah ta'ala misguided him is misguided. There's nothing that is wrong with him or is nothing that he perpetrated that he earns the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And many non-Muslim will argue on this basis that your Quran says God guides whom he wants and misguides whom he wants and God gui misguided me. So uh, wh why am I at fault? Number one. Number two, another doubt that comes in our minds that what about a man that has been isolated from society? Or a man that never ever heard about Allah and his Rasul or about Islam. Although in these times it's difficult to say that because media is all over. And some way or the other, and Alhamdulillah through the barakah of the tabligh, jama'ah, they are going around the world and they are going into absolute remote places. But yet, even today, there are some isolated communities around the world like in the Amazon jungles or perhaps few years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago, when there was no means of media, there was no means of traveling as we have today, maybe there's an isolated person and what if he never ever hear about Islam and he never ever hear about the Quran and he never ever hear about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa How will it be fair that he be put in Jahannam too? Three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran al-Kareem, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودَ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ And Thamud, the Qawm of Thamud, we guided them. But we know for my, for my and your, your knowledge, we know that in the Quran, in many other ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that Thamud, they were very, very disobedient. And they disobeyed the commands of their Prophet and they went into Jahannam. Allah ta'ala destroyed them. But Allah is saying in an ayah openly, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودَ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ And Thamud, we guided them. So how can they get the guidance of Allah yet be disobedient to Allah? One doubt. Second doubt that I mentioned was the doubt that Allah says He guides and He must guides. Then what's it up to the servant to do? Thirdly, if a man is isolated. Now I'm coming back to the answers of these questions that's lurking. Let's first discuss the two different categories of Hidayah. There's two different categories of Hidayah. Number one is Al Hidayatul Amma, general Hidayah. And one is Al Hidayatul Khasa, special Hidayah. What's the difference? Someone comes to me and tells me, Imam, I need to go to Brisbane. One is I give explanation to this person how to get there. I draw for him perhaps a map, I tell him get on the Pacific Highway, this is how you go, this is the turn you will take, this is the exit you will take. Good, Alhamdulillah. And one is, that is Al-Hidayatul Amma, that is a general Hidayah. That's just to tell the person. The second type of Hidayah is Al-Hidayatul Khasa, where I say, you know what my brother, perhaps there's too many turns and you're going to get lost, I will take you myself. So I put him in my car and I drive him to his destination. That is Al Hidayatul Khasa. That is a special Hidayah. After understanding this, come and give an example. Hidayatun Amma, general Hidayah, where Allah Ta'ala just told the people. He never 
take them and put them to their destination. Allah Ta'ala just told them the right way. Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَمَّا ثَمُودَ فَهَدَيْنَاهُمْ فَاسْتَحَبُّ الْعَمَا عَلَى الْهُدَى And Allah says, إِنَّا هَدَيْنَاهُ السَّبِيلَ إِمَّا شَاكِرًا وَإِمَّا كَفُورًا Allah Ta'ala says, we have guided men. We have guided men. Allah says, I have guided men. Imma Shakira. Sometimes we have guided him to make sugar to me. Right. This guidance is Aam. It is a general type of Hidayah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to. Inna alayna ala al huda. Allah says in the Quran Kareem. In Surah Al Layl, the twelfth ayah. Inna alayna ala al huda. Upon us is guidance. Upon us, upon Allah, Allah says, upon us is to guide humanity. Surah Al Nahl. Allah Ta'ala says that Allah, it is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide man to the moderate path. This all is referring to Al Hidayatul Amma, general Hidayat. And Allah Ta'ala has made the means of Hidayat for humanity. Hence, Allah Ta'ala has sent prophets to all humanity. And Allah Ta'ala has sent books. And Allah Ta'ala has made ulama. And Allah Ta'ala has placed signs all over us in the skies, in the earth. Wafi anfusikum, in yourselves. That is all the time taking your focus to a great creator. These are all means of a person getting this arm and general hidayah which is meant for everyone equally. And then there is al hidayatul khasa. Now how it works is that Allah Ta'ala has made the means of hidayat for all. There are some that accept that guidance and there are some that do not accept that guidance. Like for example, an, a poor person comes to you. And he's asking, but his bowl is upside down. He has a bowl to ask, but his bowl is upside down. If his bowl is going to be upside down, no matter what you give him or how much you give him, he's not going to attain anything. Because whatever you're giving him is sliding down and falling to the floor. He needs to turn that container upright. Then even the little you give him will remain and contain. Similarly, our hearts are like containers. Allah's hidayat is showering on this world. But if a man's heart is corroded, and if a man's heart is turned upside down, then no matter how many prophets come to him, no matter how many books come to him, no matter how many lectures he listens, that hidayat will not penetrate his heart. Simple as that. And that is why it comes clearly in the hadith. Prophet said, a man does a bad action, a black spot comes on his heart. Then another bad action, another spot comes on his heart. Until so, he's so indulged in evil that his heart becomes black. Then after a while, he's not turning to Allah. He's not making tawbah. He's indulging in his sins. Then there's no use of such a person. That is khatam Allahu ala qulubihim. Allah Ta'ala puts the stamp on their heart. Hence, until then they had a chance. My brothers, subhanallah, Allah Ta'ala wants humanity to come to the right path. Since when Allah Ta'ala wants to misguide people? Since when Allah Ta'ala does not want to guide even Fir'aun? We're going to talk about it now. Even Fir'aun, Allah Ta'ala wanted him to come to the right path. That is why he sent Musa to him. If Allah didn't want Fir'aun to come to the right path, what was the need to send a great messenger as Musa to go time and again to Fir'aun to go and reprimand him, to go and warn him. This is all proof that Allah wants humanity to come to him. Allah wants humanity to go to Jannah. So this first type of Hidayah, Allah wants it for all. Allah Ta'ala wants everyone to get it. But unfortunately, there are some people out of their own choice that do not heed this Hidayah. They do not listen to the prophets. They do not take these warnings that is coming to them every day by Allah. And when that happens, then Allah Ta'ala places a seal on their hearts. 
And that is what Allah is referring to, that He guides whom He wants, and He must guide whom He wants. The Aam Hidayah, the Hidayah that's for everyone, Allah wants it for everyone. Everyone's supposed to listen to it. Yes, after a considerable amount of time, when man is stubborn on his misguidance, and he turns away from Allah, and Allah Ta'ala has no, Allah Ta'ala realizes that this man is a hopeless case, then Allah Ta'ala writes him off, stems his heart, and then that Hidayatul Khassa, that special Hidayah that's supposed to come to him, he is now deprived of it. And that is what Allah is saying, that he must guide whom he wants. That's the misguidance is referring to. So no one can say Allah intended my misguidance. No, you had a chance. Allah gave you a chance. Allah wanted you to go to Jannah, but you defied it. You turned against Allah. You fought against Allah. You rebelled against Allah. You challenged the commandments of Allah. Hence, you got yourself in a situation that Allah now made the decision of misguidance further for you. So that clears the doubt from that. Secondly, the doubt about the isolated man. I told you in a hadith in one of the past weeks that Allah created al waid fi qalbi kullin nas, fi qulubin nas. Allah Ta'ala created an advisor, an advisor in the heart of every human being to advise him, a conscious. Allah Ta'ala, what is the difference between me and an animal? The animal eats, I eat. The animal sleeps, I sleep. The animal drinks, that I drink. The animal has enjoyments in life, I have enjoyments in life. So what's the difference between me and that animal? Allah Ta'ala gave insan aql. Allah gave insan thinking power. And it is because of this thinking power that this man that hardly weighs 100 kilograms can subdue an elephant of 2,000 kilograms. It is because of this thinking power and the intellect of man that he has subdued the entire world under his command. This thinking power is given to insan thinking not only about the creation but to go beyond that who is the creator of such creation. If a man is isolated in one island, he never meet anyone in his life. However, however, he did not make shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of Qiyamah he will be saved. He will not be asked about Muhammad because about Muhammad you have to be told. You will not be asked about Salah because he never get any book. He will not be asked about Sawm and Zakah. But yes, at tawheed the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the poet says, Ala kullu shay'in yadullu ala annahu wahidu. Everything is indicative that there is one supreme being. If his heart accepted that supreme being, whatever he called him, no how, whichever way he worshipped him, whichever way, that is appreciated to Allah. One day, Musa is sitting and he finds a man and this man is calling unto Allah in utmost affection. Ya Rabbi, oh my Allah, where are you? Oh Allah, will you come down so I may comb your hair? Oh my Allah, will you come down so I may polish your shoes? Oh Allah, may you come down so I may make some, you know, food for you. I made some breakfast for you. And Musa alayhi salatu was salam really got angry with the man. How can you speak in this way and in this fashion to Allah? Allah is the supreme being that do not need these things. He's not like me and you. The man got hurt and he walked away. Allah then asked Musa alayhi Salatu was salam. Oh Musa, did we make you did we make you a means of linking people towards us or chasing people away? Did we make you a means of linking people towards us or chasing them away? The man did not know. The man was not educated. The man was an ignorant man. But he had that feeling towards me. He had a good attitude towards me. You just had to mold it in the correct way. You needed to explain to him in a nice, lovely manner. So don't chase people away from Allah. People have to be linked towards Allah. Everyone, Sayyidina Imam Abu Hanifa says, how many paths that leads to Allah? Adadu anfasil khalaiq. How many times a person breathes? He breathes thousands, if not millions and billions of times. 
So many ways are there leading to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anyway, this isolated man in this island, if he recognized the supreme being, then inshallah he will be saved. Even though he did not practice or, you know, uh, be a Muslim as say, because it never reached him. وَلَا يُكَلِّفُ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِلَّا وُسْعَهَا Some ulama of the opinion, he will be resurrected and then he will be asked few questions. If he recognizes the oneness of Allah in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he will be saved. That is also an opinion. Anyway, to wrap it up today, we said, Hidayah Amma and Hidayah Khasa. Hidayah Amma is general for all. And as I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants everyone to be showered with this Hidayah. But unfortunately, if people do not listen, then what happens is Allah ta'ala seals or closes the door of Hidayah. And that takes us to Hidayatul Khasa. Now to show you how much Allah Ta'ala wants people, wants people to come on the straight path and wants people to listen. Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Allah sent me to save you from the fire. وَيَانَ bi hujazikum. I am holding you on your collars, pulling you behind, but you are fighting your way and then throwing yourselves in the fire. Allah Ta'ala sent the messengers for this purpose. Look at here, look, look at this. I was mentioning about Fir'aun. Allah Ta'ala sends Musa alayhi salatu wa salam to Fir'aun. And what does he say? If Allah Ta'ala wanted to just throw Fir'aun in the fire, he would say, Musa, you know what, be harsh to him. But Allah wanted Fir'aun to accept. So Allah Ta'ala is giving him a fair chance. Allah Ta'ala says to Musa, You and Harun go to Fir'aun. Oh Musa, you and Harun والسلام, go to Fir'aun. Be very, be very gentle in your speech to him. Be kind in your speech to him. Who is Allah telling? Kalimullah. To be gentle in his speech to Fir'aun. And what is the reason? So oh Musa, he may heed your advice and he may follow you. He may fear me. Allah wants Fir'aun. Allah loves Fir'aun if he's going to obey Allah. And Allah wants him to be obedient. And we also learn from here that no one, you know, to become a da'i. We all want to be du'at. We all want to call to Allah. We all want to give bayans. Very good, mashallah. But we have to have the trick or we have to have the wisdom how to give da'wat. Is my da'wat bringing people really closer to Allah or is it taking people further away from Allah? A person came to Harun al-Rashid, the king of the time, great king, grand king of Baghdad. And he said, oh Harun, you know, you do this wrong and you do this wrong and he's reprimanding me in a very bad way. And Harun al-Rashid said that when did you become better than Musa? And when did I become worse than Fir'aun? When Musa spoke to Fir'aun, Allah said, be soft in your speech. Are you better than Musa and am I worse than Fir'aun that you can speak to me in such a bad manner? Wallah, Dawat has a style. Dawat has a way. Just recently now in the school, one of the kids he was doing very bad in the English class. So the teacher told him, you know what, you're going to lose. You're a big loser. You're going to fail the exams. So you know what he tells the teacher? So what if I lose and uh, I fail? You're going straight into the fire of Jahannam. <laughs> so the non-Muslim teacher, he got a shock of his life. He quickly came to me and said, Imam, big problems. The kids are all sending me to the fire of hell. So this is not the way we give da'wah. This is the way we are chasing them away from Allah. We're supposed to be the link to join them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mawlana Yusuf rahmatullahi should always say, one of the elders of tabligh, he should say that we all boast of how many people we brought to the fold of Islam. We all boast to how many people we brought to the masjid. We all are proud of how many people we link to Allah, but least we realize how many people we turned away from Allah. How many people we turned away from Islam. Sometimes a man was just thinking about Islam, but your bad manners to him made him forever think, you know, Islam is a bad religion. So it is our akhlaq. Look at Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. Hassan and Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. They come to the masjid. And they see one old man making a very bad hudu, haphazard hudu. Just anyhow, they could go up to him and say, Uncle, you know what, you have to make a proper hudu, your hudu is not counted and this and that. But 
Subhanallah. There's a tact of how to deal with people. There's a tact of how to win hearts. There's a tact of how to link the creation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Hassan and Hussein do not do it that way. Hassan tells Hussein that, Oh Hassan, I can make better wudu than you. Hussein says, No. I can make wudu same like the wudu of Rasulullah. And then they come to the uncle and they say, Ya Ammi, Ya Ammi, oh my beloved uncle, me and him are squealing. Who can make a better wudu like the wudu of Rasulullah? We are going to both make wudu in front of you and you, make, you judge whose wudu is better. So the old man is saying, okay, all right. And they both make perfect wudu like the wudu of Rasulullah. It made him realize that his wudu is not perfect. In this way, they did not break his heart. And also they made him realize that what wudu is supposed to be. Look at the good akhlaq of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when giving da'wat. Ud'u ila sabili rabbik bil hikmati wal mu'idati al hasana. Nabiya Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever call a man's name in specific. Nor did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mention a person's name when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was admonishing him or Rasulullah was advising him. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always said, ma balu aqwamin, what is wrong with certain, certain people? You should just use the word certain, certain people. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever say this, what is wrong with such Sunni, ya Sunni, or so and so Salafi, or so and so Bid'ati, or so and so. Where did all these captions come in this ummah that is disuniting this ummah? Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood that if a man comes with Iman, he's accepted and appreciated in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He should say, Ma balu aqwamin. What is wrong with certain, certain nation? These were the words of my Nabi. He never ever named someone. He never ever embarrassed every, anyone. Look at this last incident and then I'm closing. Uh, uh, inshallah, I will end. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is one day sitting. This man comes up to the Nabi of Allah. Allahu Akbar. People are sitting around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is sitting. The man comes up to Rasulullah and says, Ata'dhan li biz zina? Ya Rasulullah, I want to make zina. Do you give me permission? Ya Allah. Imagine if a person comes now and tells the Imam, I want to make zina, Imam, give me permission. Everyone will jump down his throat. Allahu Akbar. Sahaba became angry. Firstly, he wants to do a wrong. And then he comes to ask permission from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But look at my noble master, how he deals with this situation. He was the noble master that had the art of winning in people's hearts. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, sit down, sit down, relax. I ask you a few questions, then I'll give you your answer. Tell me, in Kana Ummak, if it was your mother, uh, you know, and someone wanted to come and make zina with your mother, would you allow it? Would you just let her come and do it? No, 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 not with my mother. Okay. In Kana Ukhtak, if it was your own sister and someone just comes and wants to make zina with your sister, would you allow it? No. In Kana Bintak, if it was your daughter and someone wants to come and make zina with her, would you allow it? Never. Nabi Karim Sassam said, then don't you think the girl you want to go and make zina with is also the mother of someone or the sister of someone or the daughter of someone? And how you don't like it, none of them will like it. Oh, okay. Then Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam put his hand on his chest in a very gentle manner and said, Allahumma tahir qalbahu wa hassin farjahu. Oh Allah, purify his heart and protect him from all evil. He says that, that, that action became so detested in my heart that from that day on I never ever wanted to see it again. That is how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won hearts. I can elaborate on this point and go over and over. But the message to take home is, we all want to be du'at. We all want to call to Allah. But there's an art of calling towards Allah that in doing so, we do not chase people away from Allah. We win people's hearts and bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, I... I very briefly showed you the two different ways of Hidayah, Hidayah Al-Khasa, Hidayah Amma. One is to just show it uh, or, and explain it and one is to take a person there. That to just show it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed everyone through the prophets and the kitabs and finally 
to take a person there. Once a person brings Iman and believes in Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enhances him and grants him hidayah upon hidayah. Inshallah, we will carry on next week.